this is Teju. And this is Amin. So, Amin is my friend. Uh, you probably haven't seen him before in my videos. So, yeah, today we came up uh, with this video which would explain you about uh, different perspectives that we both have. Yep. So, Amin is here like right after his uh, high school, mm -hmm. and I'm here after university. So, we are going to discuss some points that gives you like broad perspectives on which is better, which is bad. And I'm gonna try to keep my hand here because it's so windy and my hair is all over the place. <laughs> anyway, all right. So yeah, so I came here after my uh, high school and I moved to my university here. Um, and yeah, we just wanted to present that perspective as to like, what's better? Is it better to come to Canada or anywhere outside um, of India after high school or after completing university? So let's get started with this video. No. So watch till the end. Definitely there are like a lot of points that will help you to make better decisions. So let's get started. Alright, so after like a lot of debate about what the style of the video is going to be about, uh, we came to a conclusion that it's going to be an interview between the both of us. So I'm going to be asking her some questions. She's going to be asking me some questions. So it's her turn to ask me some questions. So I mean, uh, most of my viewers ask these questions a lot. Like, when should I come actually scan the immigration mm -hmm. processes? Like, how how can it be easy for students to live here? Like, a lot of questions. And there are students who are right uh, who are wanting to come here right after their high school. So my first question is. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> So, how did you come up with this idea? Like, why did you want to immigrate to Canada and study here out of like a lot of countries? Okay, that's actually very funny and <laughs> interesting because um, we were just speaking to our mutual friend Kamal and uh, he was mentioning how in 12th grade, I really wanted to, and even 11th grade, so I just really wanted to study outside because I was studying in Narana Junior College in Hyderabad, which was a jail for me, honestly. Uh, and the, the way they taught me, the way they did things, um, I couldn't understand or just accept the fact that that's how my education was going to be. So I knew that I needed some more hands-on approach towards learning. So I thought that it made sense to move out. I've also seen Three Idiots and other movies, so they did inspire me to go out of India <laughs> as to um, just understanding how the hands-on approach towards learning works versus just a rote type of learning. So yeah, that was my motivation. So, back to my question and struggling with the hair. Um, <laughs> my question to you is, why did you uh, not consider going out after high school? Frankly speaking, I always wanted to stick to my parents. That's one thing. Parents are important. Yeah, basically I didn't have an exposure at that time. So even though I had, I'm very confused. Like, how do I live outside? Like, at a very yeah. young age. Yeah, I was 17 when I came out, so, so totally understandable. Yeah. 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 So I'm not maybe mature enough mm -hmm. to leave my parents and go abroad. That's a good point. Yeah, maturity level. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Okay. Okay. So clearly, I'm having a lot of problems with this wind. So we're actually gonna go inside. Yeah. And talk because this is like <laughs> just uh, after a break. <laughs> but yeah. You know, uh, people have long hair have no trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I think I just blow dry my hair. Oh long. yeah. <laughs> so we're back, and now we're indoors, so no more wind problem. Okay. Yeah. Coming here at a very young age, what are the key challenges that you face? Mm, that's a good one because yeah definitely like challenges are part of life but if you're going to a new country and you're uh, you're so young I think definitely that brings in lots of challenges so challenges okay so I think every walk of life there was so much to learn as to the culture how things work here for example like public transit like just getting familiar with the bus stops to like the schedules to using Google Maps all the time. <laughs> Seriously, like the weather app is so important in Canada because it can be like super sunny and then next thing you know, it's like raining and snowing and the whole thing has turned into like snow land, like literally. So yeah, yeah, yeah those I just agree. those little things I think were, um, took, took a, bit, a bit of time to learn. But yeah, just getting familiar with the culture, the standard day-to-day -day activities yeah that's what it is. i think there is no much difference with in this point yeah. whether you come uh, 
later in your age or yeah. Yeah, early. You're gonna face that sometime because it's gonna be yeah. it's gonna be a different culture, a different environment, and you're gonna learn so many things. So, but I'm maybe assuming, uh, the maturity. Mm -hmm. So you know. So you're saying it might have age, been easier for you to. Uh, learn it that would have been easier for me than you. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's very arguable and makes sense. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh. So my next question is um, for you: when you were doing your undergrad in India mm -hmm. versus when you came here and you. Saw the education system here. What was your major like um, epiphany or like one thing that you found that oh it's done so differently in India versus Canada? Mm, that's a good question and a very complicated one. <laughs> Con can go controversial. <laughs> okay, whatever. So um, I don't know, uh, like. I cannot answer for everybody, but uh, I came from NITK, so education system is very like high level. Mm -hmm. I can say it's, it it has that international way of teaching, like, mm -hmm. the touch of international education. So I I did not have much of uh, culture shock in that aspect. But do you I mean like do you mean like class schedules and? booking courses that yeah are everything everything is same but if I have to talk for the local engineering or medical students uh, who had to go to the local colleges I think there would be slight difference coming to the major part why most students like hesitate to travel outside for their education is definitely money yeah, right. Money is key. Yeah. And I know that lots of people have this in mind when we're we're talking about or when they think about education outside of India. So we're gonna have like a discussion as to what are the challenges, what are the differences, what are the strategies and different perspectives on after university or after high school. So first point perhaps from my side would be definitely yeah, so since university uh, education or like just after high school it's like a generally a three to four year program so it's a larger expense it's a larger program versus perhaps like a diploma program or a, something that you do or even a master's program it's generally like a one to two year program so that's a major difference right there right yeah, yeah you're right i don't see this a uh, part-time work culture in india yeah that's a major difference that i found mm -hmm. here accommodation travel books everything is very expensive here so to keep up with those expensive uh, you know lifestyle we do part-time jobs so so how did you like how did you feel uh, yeah. taking up a job right after high school yeah so actually I was kind of fortunate enough to um, get some decent scholarships and my part-time work was mostly like tutoring students so it wasn't too bad because I used to do that in India actually. So it wasn't such a big of a shock, but I, I had many friends who were working part-time at the mall or even just in like uh, food industry. So like definitely I think um, it is something that we're not used to as students in India, right? And in general, even when uh, people go to university in India, they don't really work in general part-time anywhere per se. It's just you're studying per se, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so it does give you that full experience of like independence you're earning i mean at least for your food and accommodation i mean like i think thinking about whether you can earn for your tuition i think that part is is tough like i would definitely not recommend anyone thinking that oh i can earn for my tuition fees and come to canada because i don't think it works that way just in canada mm -hmm. so you would definitely want to plan your tuition fees in advance but yeah food and accommodation i think you can definitely target that for your part-time work for sure yeah yeah i agree actually so in my case, I had to work like, uh, I had to take up two jobs, one in college, one outside college. Mm -hmm. So so since I have like work experience back in India, so I didn't feel that very difficult. Like uh, I was able to manage my studies as well as work, yeah. like most students do. Um, I didn't have that kind of uh, you know, threat or some inconvenience or something to go out and work. So what's the next topic? Oh, okay, so the next topic is going to be opportunities. So once you graduate, um, what's better to get your first full-time job? Is it better to come after high school to Canada or is it better to come after university? Wow. 
Wow, that's, a, that's, that's the question. What do you think? What do I think? Okay. <laughs> um, well, I'm gonna give my answer after you give your answer. So oh, let's go. okay. So, I recently graduated. I can share my like uh, my experience in like searching new jobs. Yep. So, I, I have attended at least like 50 to 60 interviews. I have applied for more than 200 jobs here. And uh, of course, I landed good jobs. Uh, I had an offer under NOC A and also NOC B and NOC C. So, I I had like opportunities in my hand, but I can say it's not an easy job. So the major challenges that I faced is like the communication. Interview processes are really fast, group discussions and just interviews are really hard and to get through with the Canadian students here. Of course, you can see the difference between a, a Canadian and an Indian speaking. English, right? So the communication is definitely a barrier. Um, secondly, uh, knowing the job market is really important. So they're going up. Yeah, because you can end up getting a job in Canada, definitely. But are you going to end up in the right job? That's important. So knowing the job market is very important. So since I'm a very recent immigrant. I can say that I don't have much grip on it uh, when compared to you. I, I'm just assuming that like you might have a better, you know, uh, view on it. Like yeah. Job yeah. So like I would definitely say that I really wanted to bring this point up, and if you should note it down or write it down, <laughs> bookmark it, whatever you want to do. But co-op, co-op is the answer to getting your foot in the door. Oh yeah. Because yeah, because yeah. co-op really gives you that opportunity to go out there, do actual full-time kind of jobs for like four, eight, maybe 12 to 16 months. And it's just like an internship, but it's actually paid and it pays well. And you actually get the experience too. So you can put something on your resume that's a Canadian experience. And you can also use that reference later for your actual job applications too, right? Or sometimes they actually recruit you back. So you can go back and work there full-time too. So, so have you participated so, in yeah, I, my, my initial program, so I actually did some switching between programs. So I started with chemical engineering and did a lot of debating and that should be another video about my debates. <laughs> but I ended up doing a um, degree in mathematics. So my chemical engineering program was actually co-op. Uh, and I did like five co-ops when I was in ChemEng. And then when I moved to math, um, since I did five of them already, like due to like different rules and stuff, uh, I did not get a co-op program. But anyway, I got all that experience, all that different um, exposure that I needed for my full-time actual experience. So definitely, if you want to come to Canada, one thing I definitely recommend is doing a co-op program. So it's C-O hyphen O-P co-op program. You have so, to do a co-op program. So for people who don't know what is co-op, yep. it would give an opportunity for students to work full-time while they're studying. So this is a different kind, uh, kind of category, we can say. Mm -hmm. And there is a different kind of, you know, uh, work permit, yeah, co-op yeah. work permit. So that yeah. is gonna be a different video. I don't want to confuse you with all kinds of yeah, new sure. terms. But anyways, one thing I can say is um, you could get co-op program even in postgraduate uh, studies. Uh, so, but I think co-op programs are more popular with the, you know? Undergrad programs. Undergrad. Sure. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Programs. I think they're more popular, but again, for postgrad studies, like I know there are grad programs that have that too. Yes, so. yes, that's right. So yeah, I chose a program with, with doesn't have a co-op program. Yep, yep. So yeah, I thought uh, for people who are, you know, opting a course, they should definitely look into this. Yeah, for sure. So next topic is really interesting and most frequently asked question. Like, I know all of you want to know this <laughs> question and answer. So. so I know that's why we are going to, uh, we left it to the last. So, we are talking about PR, so which You want to get a PR, you want to get a PR, you want to get a PR, don't you? Yeah, everybody who comes here wants a PR, definitely. So, we are discussing these points uh, to give you a, a broad perspective on like which is better, like high school or university, uh, which will help us to get a 
you know, posture appear. Yeah, and I, I want to take that answer and uh, <laughs> I think that actually coming after university might be better for you in that case. Really? If, you, if your goal is really PR and getting a permanent residence here, mm -hmm. then I definitely think so because it's going to actually save you some money, it's going to save you some time, and it's going to it's gonna save you a lot of like headache as well in terms of a lot of lots of things. So let me explain. So since for PR, uh, one thing you need is you need one year of work experience, right? Yeah. At least mm -hmm. with the current uh, procedures and programs. Uh, there is a new TR to PR pathway, but that's a, that's a different and it's a new completely one-time thing. Mm -hmm. But from yeah. the standard standard um, pathways, there's really that one year after your full-time studies of work experience. So one year of work experience after you've done and completed your program. So since you would be doing only a two-year or a one-year diploma slash um, any like master's program, it's going to be only two years plus that one-year work experience, so three years, and then you can apply for a PR. Versus uh, sometimes co-op programs take up to five years, so four to five years of undergrad, and then plus one year, so six, four, uh, five to six years of uh, like Study. duration, right? Yeah. Study plus work, yeah. and then you can apply for a PR. So, oh, okay. so right, if you want to save your time and money, because you're going to be paying your tuition fees, which is going to be international tuition fees for all those years too, right? Mm -hmm. If you're going to save your time and money, definitely, I think, if your PR is the goal, then yeah, definitely it makes sense to come after university, because it's going to actually give you more points too, because you're going to get like masters of points for education too, right? And it's going to be Canadian masters. So you're gonna also get your Canadian ex education points. You're gonna get um, like a master's level education points. You're gonna get your work experience points. So, so. in this uh, scenario, I would like to add one point. So for people who are like graduating in India or any other country and then coming here, I would suggest work for two years and come here because that would add up to your PR score. Um, the PR score, people who just moved to Canada uh, and versus people who have worked for two or three years and moved to Canada, there's a huge, you know, difference. There's a huge difference. Yeah, uh, I totally yeah. agree. And if you, yeah. Especially if you're working for like Amazon, Deloitte, or even like, you know, like Goldman Sachs or whatever. Mm -hmm. Those are big names and those are international names too, right? So yeah. these brands are recognized anywhere. So if your resume has those big names, then it's perfect because you're going to get your opportunities well too. You may actually get a PR before coming to Canada. So if your PR is your goal, then that's mm -hmm. a completely different story. And yeah, definitely it's better, the later the better because you're gonna get more and more points. So that's a different story, but yeah. Okay, now we are at our last segment. So we have these couple of questions that we wanted to ask each other. So let's get started. All right. So our first question. So what do you think I miss the most coming here after university? Hmm. So, yeah, I think um, definitely those long-lasting friendships because in university you get to know a lot of people and you're with them for like four years. So just those long-lasting four years of friendships. But also just that worldview point that I made in the video earlier, you're, mm. you've already said those like presumptions about the world. So just like for me, I think that I, I got to make that clear um, with an independent mindset. So. Yeah. Okay. What about you, by the way? What do you think I missed the most? Of course, I have a huge list for you. And out of that, the top one is uh, food. <laughs> <laughs> all the dosas, yeah. all the biryanis. I know you're a foodie <laughs> and you love food, so you definitely missed food. It can, it can be like a small thing, but you know, with food, a lot of emotions are attached. Yeah. At least for no, for me, like for me, <laughs> yeah, I totally agree with your point. I think that's that's one thing that I miss the most. You anyway, miss the jalebi, okay, you yeah. miss the kashmiri chaat, you miss the pani puri, yeah, so all this the Indian chicken sixty five. Oh my god! But, uh, <laughs> so you miss definitely that Indian Haleem, Oh my god! Food. How can I forget Haleem? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I can say that you miss a lot of Indian culture, which is like bright, noisy, fun yeah. kind of a culture. <laughs> So, I could say that you could be jealous of that. Cool, cool. <laughs> <laughs> Food is definitely one thing I'm jealous about. <laughs> so, our second question, mm -hmm. and it's gonna be from me to you first, mm -hmm. uh, is what do you think I had an advantage over you about? I can definitely say a lot of points, but the first thing that hits me is 
the communication skills as you can see in this video i'm i'm pretty sure like your like your english and vocabulary and communication is better than mine and secondly the exposure and you know knowing the canadian culture is definitely one thing that i'm really jealous about <laughs> so, and i'm thinking like that's the you know that's the thing that i am missing and you have an advantage on it yeah and i think um it just factually i think it makes sense to me yeah. so what do you think if if i ask the same question yeah advantage yeah like i think um the fact that your pr process did not take as long as mine so <laughs> yeah that's definitely one thing that you had an edge over me yeah now we are at our last and final question are you ready yes <laughs> okay okay my question is, given a chance would you change your decision mm okay okay how how are we going to do this so Let's just shout out the answer. We don't know each other's answers, by the way. So let's shout out the like count of three, okay? Mm. So one, two, three. No! No, <laughs> no way, really? Oh like, so, yeah. Genuinely okay. no. Yeah, seriously. Honestly, like I think, <laughs> I think is like, I think you should definitely own your um, like choices and decisions and decisions in life. So if you made a decision of not coming to Canada after high school. or if you made a decision to come into canada after university or you did not make um, you know choose to do that so that's totally on you and that's totally cool cuz everyone has their own path and you should definitely appreciate your own path there is no perfect way of living yeah. you know it's all your choices and you have to learn when you you know travel through life this is my life mantra that i follow cool. every day yeah. so there's nothing you know bad or good everything is like Cool. I did not know you were gonna say no too. Okay. <laughs> no. I know that you would say no. <laughs> yeah, because I can't, I can't miss all that fun that I had. So uh, no, definitely. And I, I'm pretty sure I would have had that fun in India too. So especially that chicken 65 that I missed. Oh my god. So, um, but uh, no, I, I had, well, I had decent chicken 65 yeah. in Toronto. So I, I made, made do, made do. <laughs> Fine. Okay, that's all for today's video. I hope you really like this video. Yeah, so, so <laughs> and uh, it's very nice uh, to have you on this video. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thanks for much. having me, guys. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. So, so the whole point of making these videos is to give away good and genuine information yeah, and, and perspective. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I hope you really enjoyed it, and please like and share my videos. Yeah. And very nice to meet you. My and, name is Amina um, Ken, and this was great. This was really great. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Okay, comment down below if you have any questions or if you want. I'll uh, leave some important links that you can go uh, online and browse yourself. So that's it. Anything cool. else? All right, adios. <laughs> See you. See you.